we have a wonderful uh, program today, and it's just, uh, you know, this is the Missions Times of Emphasis for Southern Baptists, and um, so we're going to, I'm going to read a, a very familiar scripture verse, and then we've asked uh, Mary Lou Sinclair, who works with our W. Uh, normally, this Monday, we would have a pastor and wives uh pastor's conference and the WNU would host it and they'd decorate our tables and, and lead us in prayer for missionaries. And uh, so with COVID, we're not able to do that, but we did want to have the WNU uh, lead in a missions prayer. So uh, let's, uh, let's begin. I'm going to read Matthew 28, verse 19 and 18, 19 and 20. And it's a very familiar passage, but it reminds us of the mission that God has given to all of us. It's a great commission, and after I've read this, then Mary Lou Sinclair will uh, lead us in a, in a prayer. So, the Bible says, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I will be with you always to the very end of the age. And a powerful, wonderful verse. So Mary Lou, if you'd lead us in a... Yes, um, and I just have a couple a minute to say. I want to thank all of you for partnering with WMU all these many years. And I want to thank those that are here. Um, to Am I on? Am I being heard? Okay, and I also want to thank the pastors and the, even some of you re, re, missionaries, whether you're retired or not, to, for the ministry that you've done through the years that makes so much uh, of a difference in the world. Uh, this season, we traditionally celebrate uh, the, with the International Mission Board to support them, and um, each church spotlights the Southern Baptist uh, Lottie Moon Mission in one way or another, of course, we know that it's named after a very important missionary in our history that was a missionary to China for many, many years. <clears throat> right now, we have over 3,600 um, IMB missionaries around the world, and uh, we feel very strongly that it's important to support those missionaries in spiritually, financially, and even physically, some of them, and they we know they depend on our backing. Um, <clears throat> and so we want to, uh, we, we want to, in, in uh, 2019 alone, there were over 89,000 souls saved through the IMB and um, Christ commission that you just read uh, cannot be fulfilled by just one church or one group. We all work together through this. And when you generously pray and give to um, the Lottie Christmas offering, that is a way to support our missionaries. So if you ever want to hear any more about DBAWMU, we have a website that you can go to. And it's just, if you go to DBAWMU, then you'll be able to see some of the ministries that are involved in our association. Okay, and let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this time to be together, to share, to learn. We ask that you fill our hearts with uh, love for missions, that we can be involved in any level that, that we have possible. We love you for how you pro provide for us, and even so often that we don't even know. And we ask that you provide for our international missionaries as they uh, are your hands and feet in the work that they're doing. And we thank you and we praise you and we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mary Lou. Amen. And let me just mention that next week we will have Leonard Hatcher. We'll be talking about community ministry and uh, our church strengthening team will be helping us with that, of uh, Chelsea and James. So it'll be a really powerful time. So this month, in light of the uh, Lottie Moon Christmas uh, offering. We're talking about missions uh, here locally, and uh, you're going to hear a, a, just an amazing story today, and I've asked our associate director, Scott Coleman, to host this meeting. He's going to share with you a little bit because he has worked with this couple that he's going to introduce from the very beginning. So, uh, uh, Scott, I'm going to turn it over to you and let you lead us from here. 
Great. Thank you very much, Bob. And thank you everybody for joining us. It is going to be a lot of fun and it's a great honor to have Kika and Anungla uh, with us today to tell a little bit about their story. Let me tell just a little bit and you guys, Kika uh, and Anungla, you guys correct me uh, where I am wrong, but they are from uh, India, from a part of the country that is up in the Northeast. I'll show you a map. Well, I could show you a map in a minute. But they are in, um, from a tribe called the Owl tribe, the A-O tribe. And I have uh, the privilege of having a few things that they hunt right there. And this is a vest. It's got this tuft of hair on it because until the 1870s, they also hunted these guys, which would be other people, right? <laughs> so they were headhunters. The tribe was a headhunter until a Christian missionary came there in the 1870s. Um, and that's what was on this vest is a little tuft of hair, right? Isn't that what this is? Yeah. A little tuft of hair from somebody that they cut the head off. So not only do I have some cool garments, I've collected these things over the years, but look at this. This is a head hunting knife. One to the front and one to the back is how you, uh, how you do that. So this has kept my kids in line all these years. So I'll put that right there. But uh, so in the 1870s, uh, a missionary came to the Owl tribe in Nagaland and pretty much in mass, as I understand it, kind of came, the, the whole people group came to the Lord. And um, now the country is, um, that part of the country is largely Christian. So to some degree, that is kind of like our Bible belt now. And so Keegan and Ungla, you guys were there for 20 or 30 years, right? In Nagaland, yeah. serving, uh, serving in churches there but then felt God's real call out of the Bible Belt into a mission field that was still in their country, but a thousand miles to the south in Bangalore, uh, where there were many, many refugees already there, Bhutanese refugees, uh, people who were Buddhist From in Tibet. faith. Uh -huh. Go ahead, Anungla. From Tibet. Yeah, Tibetan Buddhist and, uh, and such. And so they went there and served. While they were serving Mary Lou, they came uh, across an international missionary, um, an IMB missionary, international missionary from uh, the SBC uh, named Bruce Carlton. And he is now in Oklahoma, right, Kika? Yes. 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 Oklahoma Baptist University. Yeah, working at OBU. Mm -hmm. But while he was there and while, uh, while they were, were there serving, they actually were a part of what we would call a church planting movement. And that's where, in a very short period of time, the number of believers, the number of churches is doubling. And so I began to see, uh, be a part of that. God called them from Bangalore all the way across the ocean to come to Fort Worth uh, to get some education, but also to be missionaries to the United States. When they got here, they discovered that God had brought the same people to Fort Worth that they had been working with in Bangalore. Yes. They began ministering uh, some there. Uh, they called me on the phone in 2009, um, pretty soon after y'all got here, right? Yes. Yeah. And uh, and Kika and I were talking, and I uh, and I wanted to learn more. <laughs> there were some words that I wasn't catching. You guys. <laughs> It is going to be worth the effort today. You guys pay attention because I was trying to pay attention, but I couldn't catch it over the phone. So I said, let's meet up. And so we met up. Uh, they at that time were without a car. Yeah. So they got on the train and came to Union Station. And I met them at Union Station. And it was there in the waiting room of Union Station um, that we were talking. And I understood the scope of what it was that God had been doing with them in India what he was wanting to do and what he'd begun to do uh, here in the States. And, um, and Kika, I remember at that point, one of the hallmarks of, um, of church planting movements is that they just begin with earnest prayer. People just praying and asking the Lord, um, you know, to use them and to reach their people and such. And Kika showed me uh, a place on your ankle, I think, where how he crosses his feet as he prays uh, every day has left a little mark there on his ankle. And I thought, here is a man of prayer. That impressed me, Kika. <laughs> so, uh, that has stuck with me about his diligence in prayer. 
And um, so we have begun working during their time here so far. I think it's eight churches. Is that right? That have begun and nine. Yeah. And working on another one up near the airport, uh, maybe about 25, 30 kind of home groups and stuff. Yeah. Right? And uh, they are now have expanded from Fort Worth where they were focusing originally and um, and where they still live, but are working over here in Dallas now in the Shiloh area specifically. That's one of the best uh, places. Some in Vickery, but I think it's primarily, yeah, Vickery and Shiloh and uh, doing uh, just great community ministry things. I'll let them tell about um, pork, well, pickle event, pickle discipleship and <laughs> pork pig evangelism, but using uh, the culture of the people that they're talking with. And it's not just Bhutanese anymore. It is people from the Middle East. It's people from Africa. Uh, I think Anungla just mentioned maybe about 15 different ethnicities and such. Tim Allen's church has been a big supporter. Tim has been coaching uh, a lot of the folks that Kika and Anungla are working with, and specifically a new church planter uh, that is there. Just yesterday, uh, they had in, in Fort Worth a gathering of several of those groups. And uh, it was just a small group this year, right? Just about 500 people. Yeah. <laughs> so I had about 500 uh, folks in Carter Park. God gave a great day, beautiful weather yesterday. and had about 500 folks there that they were able to share uh, things with materially for Christmas, but also uh, each one of the groups, um, their pastor, their leader uh, talked there. And so uh, it was a great time. I have those pictures, uh, Kika. I don't know if you want me to show them now or okay. uh, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let me show you a couple. I've, have I left anything out that you want me to mention? I'm going to show your. Um, um, hang on, just a minute. Where is it? There is your newsletter, and so you can just kind of get a few pictures of what's going on. This is actually from the spring, but it was an overview letter, so you can kind of see some of the uh, things that are going on. Kika Anungla. Alan and Joy Jameer are um, uh, Baylor University students, and God's gifted them great academically. They are on some great, uh, ac they're ex excelling academically there. Uh, and then Sayana is, uh, is here in the middle. She's how old now? Ten. Ten. Sayana. Yeah, fifth grader. Yeah, and so here they are, masked up with eggs that they are delivering at Easter. Uh, yeah. Here's some eggs being delivered. That's a great picture. The work has now expanded uh, from here. Here's, a, I guess, kind of a list of some of the things. The, the work has taken off from just the Dallas area to go to other parts of the United States and Cincinnati and Columbus, Ohio, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, New York City. Is it Queens or Brooklyn? It's uh, Queens. Queens. Yeah, okay. In California, working in Chinatown and San Francisco. All kinds of things going on uh, there, uh, delivering food. These are not missionaries who serve from their office. They are active in prayer walking, delivering food, and helping new church planters. Um, say this name for me again. Sam Jim. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Is now a, a new church planter working here. And Tim, you're working with him quite a bit, right? Uh, and churches are providing cars uh, sometimes, working with Hindus. Um, and you see some of these other, other things going on here. And if you would like to, during this meeting, I'll be putting a, a link in the chat when I have a moment here. If you just want to get on the newsletter uh, list, you can see kind of these exciting things that are going on right next door uh, to us. And so it would be easy ways for your church to plug into something that is, uh, that is authentically reaching refugees, that is authentically multiplying. It would be a great way for you to be a part of that, at least to learn about that, to get some of these great pictures. So there will be a simple link there where all you have to do is click on that link, leave your email address. And if you'd like to, if you have a specific question, there's a spot there on that form where you can do that as well. Um, now, Kika and Anungla, you both sent me pictures. Do you want me to show them while you're talking or right now? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right now you can show, no problem. Okay, then right here. This is from yesterday. Right, can y'all see that? I think I have to do a new share. Hang on just a minute. I'm sorry. Right there. Now, do y'all see pictures? We don't. Okay. Let me try it again. But yes, now we see. Okay. We do. We see them. Okay, great. 
in. Um, hang on, there we go. And okay, there. Now I can see this. Uh, anything you want to say about this yesterday? So yes, uh, this is in the Carter Park yesterday, and this year due to COVID, we don't we don't provide any transportation. So then we ask the people, we just give the information that um, there will be a Christmas event. So whoever is willing to come out of this COVID, you are welcome. Everyone is open. It was the open invitation. And we were expecting maybe like 100 or not. And our prayer was, God send us those who really need to be there. And yesterday, it turns out around 500 people yeah. and volunteers from various states came over. Even some did drove even 15 hours drive just to serve in this event. Yeah. And it was most unreached people were 95 person. Wow. And this time it was, uh, God really surprised us. And then the weather was perfectly warm, great, and everything went so well. Yeah, thank you, Aningle. Did you say about 95% were unsaved? Is that what you were saying? Unreached people. Yeah, completely unreached. And so uh, uh, this is the kind of groups, you know, your church could be working with as well. This church from Alabama has been a great supporter. Uh, Kika and Anungla. And from Shreveport. And Shreveport, and another from about three hours away at Shreveport. And then one team from Oklahoma. Wow. So, um, Kika and Anungla are uh, obviously Baptist missionaries, but not connected in an official way, not, not receiving funds, I guess is the way to say that, from the IMB. Uh, DBA is putting some funds in to help with one of those churches, but they are not funded missionaries. That would be a great way your church could help with this if you wanted, would be to um, provide fun, uh, funds or to provide turkeys at Thanksgiving or gifts at Christmas, just any of the things that you'll see on their list here. So this is um, one of the pictures. Christmas and that's a Christmas nativity show. Like we are presenting to the people, what is Christmas? Why Jesus came to the world, how he was born. And so this is, uh, for many people, it was like first time to see the Christmas nativity show. To see the thing act out, it acted out, very cool. And this is Anungla speaking yesterday. <laughs> Where are these men from? These are from Bhutan. And every person that came over, all the adults, they get a blanket. And then children also get their blankets and soft toys along with the food. So yeah, cool. it is from 15 nations. Wow. 15, yeah. Back here, you can see there was a bounce house going on earlier for the kids. And this year, due to the COVID, we don't have a bouncing house. Okay. So we just um, give popcorns and candies and sweets, but no bouncing house. But uh, there were more than 250 kids came over, <laughs> and it was a comment from all the children. They are uh, so longing for this. And thank you for the invitation. That is what the non-believers, most of them were commenting. And this is during the times of giving away the blankets. This is the blanket line. Nice. Okay. And this is the food serving line. So yesterday we just uh, served the food in a to-go box, but many of them sit down and eat, then only do go. And, they, yeah. they don't of, uh, they're not afraid of COVID. Everybody wants to eat. <laughs> Good, yeah. That will draw a crowd. Uh, and then, you know, like every year we used to kill the lamb, but this year Kika was sick and then the time is short, so we couldn't be able to go to the farms and butcher the lambs and all that. Yes, last year we killed two lambs. So this year we just cook chicken and all that. And then the people were asking, where's the halal? So <laughs> we really see how the trust and then it is so welcoming coming to that park and to have that fellowship we see from the people's heart. Nice. Okay, and what is this? And this is what uh, the girl is cooking. <laughs> My shadow <laughs> is cooking. 
And this is the chicken, yeah, chicken masala, chicken tikka masala. Oh. That's what we used to cook for, now it's been 10 years. Wow. Well, great. Well, I think that is yes. everything I have to share on the screen. Anything else, uh, anything else you want me to say, Kika and Anungla? Uh, yeah, I, I'm very excited this morning uh, to be with you and, and uh, to share with you. I wish we all met together in the hall or the church, knowing each other because of all the situation we have to see at the television or computer. I am not comfortable with the computer, and but anyway, we can understand each other. I think my English becoming better and better, uh, and the people will understand. So I'm very much proud of myself that I am a good speaker in English. So I hope you will understand what I'm trying to say. Well, first of all, I want to thank to our Dallas Baptist Association from 2010. They never leave us good encourager, not only the moral support, financial support, counseling, coaching, and every time when we need some of the resources, our Dallas Baptist Association is the first one to say, okay, we are here. What do you need? And then they just provided whatever we need. So the ministry, what we are doing here in one way because of our Dallas Baptist Association and churches are encouraging us, supporting us, and then be with us that you are not alone, Kika, we are here with you. So that is a greatest encouragement we got. Thank you, thank you very much to all of you and the churches also. Yes, uh, Scott has mentioned a little bit about us after planting 49 churches in India and Nepal, we came to United States 2009. And then after coming to United States, now we could able to start nine congregational church that, that I could see, and five and a four, three to four different state in United States, and then we are worshiping every Sunday around our three thousand livers every Sunday. Those are coming to Christ. So that's what God is doing. Well, this year, in this pandemic, people are very much afraid to go outside. But our God is, is still alive. Even though the pandemic is there, but he's working. So this year, in the midst of pandemic, we start a one new church among the Zoo, Zoo community there from Myanmar. And then the church is growing very fast. And then that is God is doing. In this type of pandemic, we got able to baptize four new believers who are coming from Buddhist background or Hindu background. And around our four to five people have accepted Christ we are going to baptize those people next year. So, and then we also had a wonderful time of discipleship training this year in July. So, that's great. So, everything is doing because of God Christ. People might have thinking about how do you start this ministry? Well, just want to tell you in short, we coming to United States 2009 January with a lot of luggages and uh, we landed in Fort Worth. We don't know where to go. We don't know how to live in this new area, new city. God led us to meet some people who are coming from Nepal on the way in the past and then they shoo us and then they said that we are from Nepal. We are a missionary, uh, we are a refugee, we are here. So we dig a trace from them and then we went to their homes. 
And when we went to the homes, we see your nets. They see that around uh, a lot of refugees, 80,000 kind of are here. So my wife and I just started by ourselves, go to the home, teaching English, meeting to nets, and then spend time every day. We went to college university morning time. After coming back from the class, instead of doing the assignment, oh no, our assignment has to go there to the apartment. And then they're spending from six o'clock to nine, ten o'clock with those people. So that's how we started. And then after that, within uh two months in the month of April, we first started house church. And then this house church was improving every time. At the first year, 2009, we started around uh, six house churches in one year. And then these six house churches now multiply up to 25 to 30 house churches. From house churches now, we we move to the, we call a traditional church or legacy church. We went to the church building. Now they are meeting in the church building. The church is one of the, it's around 100 to 300 people are worshiping in the church now. So that's how God is working. And then from forward, we start church in Dallas. So Dallas, a full word, Dallas, and then the mission, uh, the church planter home we train, we send that church planter to Cincinnati, Ohio, 2018. That church planter start a church over there. Now they are meeting around uh, 30 to 40 church members. And then that church planter which we sent to Cincinnati, he started not only in the Cincinnati, he started another church in uh, Columbus. Now he's became a church planter over there. So that is 2018. And then 2019, we also sent another church planter to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. And then we started church over there. And then this year we baptized five new believers in that church. And then there are around uh, 25 to 30 people are coming to that church. And then last year, next year also we have a start a uh, group of people we call a house church in New York City, uh, uh, Queen Street. So, and then from, so anyway, the churches are growing and then all these churches we started from the houses. We go to the home, tell about Jesus, and when they accept Christ, they say, Can you show us where to go to church? We told them, Church is here. Your house is the church. Let us start. So we start at your homes. And then they bring other friends to come to their homes and then house church to be loved from there. They share Christ to the others, and then it's reproducing churches in different areas. So God is doing in this type of work. We are very excited, and then we want to be a more church. Uh, we want to show more Christ to the mostly unreached people group here in the United States. Well. You might have thinking about what next. Well, what next is our call is facing on the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 8. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, ends of the earth. We call Jerusalem is Fort Worth, Judea is Dallas and Texas. Samaria is United States, ends of the earth is also United States. Well, next year we are planning to send a church planter to Nepal. I am also going with them. 
And then this will be another things we are planning to do next year. So we are now to come to United States as a Hindu or Buddhist, to coming to Christ, now to train them, we train them, now to set a church here, now do you want to go back to the homeland to reach out to your own people? How wonderful it is. And then do you want to spend your own money to go there? Because he loved your relative. He loved to see your people coming to Christ. We are very excited about that. We'll do it together. Thank you for allowing to share that one. Thank you so much, Kika. Amungla, you had some things you wanted to share too, right? Yes. Uh, thank you, Scott. And thank you, Dr. Bob Tain, for this opportunity. And then we are always thanking God for all of your support, your prayers, your partnership to, with, together with us. And thus far, you never doubt or you never question. And even Pastor Team Ellen, that you all are together with us on board and then encouraging us. So we are so thrilled to see all of you and that this is such an encouragement. So thank you again. And we give all this glory to God and then thanking him for all your commitment. Yes, in the ministry, many people are worried about this COVID and that's for sure. And this year has been a tremendous challenges in many ways and many people can see that I cannot do, I cannot go. That's that's a reason and we understand. But I just want to tell everyone that everyone, every person, the ministry begin from your own individual commitment. Mission start from your heart. And that perspective, if your perspective is in tune with God, God can lift you high and he can use you anywhere no matter where you are even in the midst of this pandemic this year we lost some of our people that we very closely minister and we are we feel bad but he came to the lord last year and before um the baptism we were thinking to give baptism to them in march but COVID slammed down but god called them prior to that so then my dear friends today you know like what will be your agenda before the Lord? People were so busy. Everyone was so busy working, no time. And God slammed the door and says, now you can work from home. You can do something, change your perspective and look at me. And in Jeremiah 45, he said, I am pulling out everything. I'm destroying everything, whatever I have planted. So exactly now that is the time before us. So even in this COVID, what we do is we go to the people and sick people are calling us. So in this kind of crisis, we cannot say, no, I cannot come. It's contagious. I cannot come. I cannot say that. So I will say, yes, I will come. And what do you need? I will, we will wear masks and gloves and go to their homes and drive them to the hospital, see the doctors make an appointment and then just pray, Lord, help us, cover us with your blood. And this is what God has been leading us like the Israelites in those times of plague. And by God's grace, still he's protecting us. And then yesterday was uh, another living testimony to all these 500 people that God just opened up the skies. It was little shower in the morning, but yesterday, it was like in the time of Joshua, that was a reminder to me, like Joshua 10, 16, how the sun in the moon was stand still to fight for Joshua in Agilon. And then yesterday, the sun was still standing for us. So God really does. And then all these people that we minister, when we start the ministry, we don't know who these people are. So the first we encounter with the Bhutanese, and then with the Iraqis, the Sudanese, the Lipanese, the Congos, the Forondians, and you can go on the list. And we don't speak that many languages. We don't know who they are and they don't know who we are. What we do is like, we will just give our smiles, go to their homes, and then we will say, oh, they need couch. They don't have table. They don't have rice. 
their fridge are empty. You don't know how to drive. So then we will just like observe and just visit and then make a list and buy and then pick up whatever the needs and ask the friends, this is what these people are needs. And then we can just make that friendship. And then when people are sick, they're really sick. So then we will just ask and then we will go to the CVs, Walmart, Costco and get a medicine for PESIC. And if they need further assistance for their ailments, then we will try to find out the doctors and then we can make a call on their behalf and explain to them because they cannot explain in English. So then we will just advocate on their behalf. And then in this COVID, when I go to the hospitals, they don't allow another person. So I will always say, I am the interpreter. So then in that card, I will just go as an interpreter. And then I will just go with the patient and then I will explain. So one of the doctor was commending to me that like, yes, I know this patient came to me for five years, but I have no idea what they are talking about. Thank you for coming. And then that doctor was right there. He was making the calls to another hospital for the doctor's appointment. So the doctor on my behalf, he makes the appointment and he said, yes, this patient don't need to see me. I am ENT, but this needs to go to neurologist. So then for two hours, we were talking back and forth with the nurses, with the hospital. So, you know, like we can speak English and then you may, you can just sit from your home and then make that appointment for somebody, advocate for somebody. Or if you're a special in all those uh, insurances with a medical side, you can just give some insight. Or if you're a teacher, you can assist some of the high school kids because in my country, I came from India. I was a professor in the university. I know my Indian standard, but here it is so foreign to me too. I'm learning. So then like they have to prepare two years in advance to go for all these um, exams, tests, papers. So then if you are a teacher or if you are a lay person, you can give them the guidance, that insight. And that is also a mission. And then through that, through your input, People will see who you are and that will show them the Christ likeness. That is the reflection of Christ likeness. And every time us we go and do something, they will always keep asking, who are you? And then sometimes people will pull my hair. Is it, is it real? And I said, yes, I'm a real person. So, you know, like it's just people who like people. And then it doesn't mean about whether you are related or not, but God connects. God connects and then we all are a missionary. So I encourage each and every individual, whoever, no matter what capacities God has given you, you may not have the resources like a big money or all this, but God has given you something and that talent, you can be able to be a channel of blessing and you can build that bridge to bring those lost souls. So this is what uh, my key role in the ministry is. I make relationship, I go to the people, meet your needs and observing them. And yesterday also in the midst of that part, there was another pastor, he came to me and says, can you come and meet this person? And that lady was really crying. So I said, what happened? Are you sick? Are you not well? And she said, till last year Christmas, my mother was sitting here. And last week she died in Ohio. We had a funeral last week. And so it broke my heart. I miss my mother. And then she pulled the pictures and showed me. And I know the mother, they moved to Ohio. So then we missed to a person this time. And then many people will bring their stories. What happened in that park and how she came. And one lady came over and said, thank you so much for never forgetting our people in inviting us and helping us. Every time we see the tiny devil, the couch, Whatever you keep is still, it struck to me and we never forget. So then the message from these people are going over to all over the world because the refugees are in all the first five uh, world countries. So we have friends from Australia, New Zealand, Iraq, Turkey, Lebanon. So everyone is like pulling their phone and then they will call and show our face. This is the one, this is the one. So then the heart connects and then that's how God works. So we encourage you and then you may have uh, resources so then you can give even if you cannot go or even last week there was a mission team from Florida, four of them came. And what they do was that 
they fix a car for one of the family who has really struggled to fix that car. And they are from one of the most enrich country. So after fixing the car for two hours, they went to their homes and then speak to them and then they download the new testament in their phone and sharing the gospel from John. And then it was such an open uh, door for us. So if you know anything and something, the door is wide open. And with that simple thing, you can share Christ. You don't need to carry the Bible around the world and preach them. You don't need any degree, but God is giving you something. And then we are thinking for a perfect time. But my dear friends, perfect time will not come. As the song says, today is mine, tomorrow may not come. So even in every time people ask me, what is my schedule look like? And to be honest with you, every morning I ask the Lord, let your schedule be my schedule. And then my team in life is today is mine, tomorrow may not come. So I, I go every day. When I see the people's needs, I just do it so that I have no regrets. I have no regrets, whatever it is in my part. Like in Hebrew, do what you have to do when God has given you time. So today I encourage and I challenge all of you that we are so scared of COVID. And yesterday also we were really back and forth. Many friends turned on us and then they said, don't do it. But we just said, Lord, help us. And then the Lord strengthened us. And then for the whole week, we don't sleep because the men is Kika and myself are the engine to carry the whole work. But God was with us. And then through that, even in that COVID, God sent 500 people. And then he's still protecting all of us. So my dear friends, even if we are just sitting in our best room, but if God is not with you, he's not going to save us. It will catch us. The virus will catch us. But if God is with us, and if it is his plan, I'm going to have that and then see, or maybe gone home. We never know. But you know, today is the time. So let us not be worried and afraid for all these things, but ask the Lord, Lord, help me, use me, whatever you want. Even your neighbors are looking for somebody to share them. Pray with them, encourage them. By your encouraging words, someone will coming out, out of that beat. And then many are jobless today. So show them some ways that you can see a new ideas from you. So after this pandemic, I'm like a counselor. I'm like a police. I'm like a housemaker. So I'm like a clown in the circus. I play so many parts. <laughs> but you know, every little part, God had a purpose to connect all the puzzles. So I encourage all of you, let us not be worried. And then at the end, I just want to read from Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28. Have you not known, have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the greater of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He keeps power to the faint and to him who has no might be increased strength. Every youth shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. May the good Lord richly encourage each and every one of us and then use us and let us say from today lord send me use me i'm here thank you wow thank you very much Anugla. thank you I really appreciate that let your schedule be mine i wrote that down uh thank you so much for that encouragement Bob, we'll come to you to close us, I guess, with prayer in just a minute. Let me just point out a couple of things that Keek and Anungla that stand out to me, and that is that they did this without a budget. They did this without a um, without having any uh, um, specific backing. They and any talent can be used. Uh, anything that you do, but a lot of times our lay people think that they have to be preachers in order to uh, have an impact for the gospel. But you heard both Keek and Anungla mention 
uh, people who work on cars, people who can just sit with somebody and talk to them in English or teach or uh, meet needs or just cry with, just be with. Virtually anything that your people do is something that God can use either in a ministry like Kika and Anunglas or in their community. No longer. What is different about missions today is in Dallas, especially, we don't have to go overseas. We don't have to cross the ocean to minister to people who come from unreached people groups. We can literally cross the street in so many places. That's even different than other parts of the country. These folks from Louisiana and Alabama that I was talking with yesterday, they said they don't have that diversity in their uh, hometowns either. So they come to Dallas, but we in Dallas have a unique opportunity Tim, what's the number? 375. How many languages now are spoken here? You're on mute, but it's somewhere around that. <laughs> it is in excess of 400 different people groups. Peoplegroups.info now um, records 420 yeah. uh, distinct people groups here in the DFW area. So they are just right here. God can really use us, unlike any other time in our history, uh, in the history of, of Christian life here in, in, this, in Dallas. There's never been this kind of opportunity. So uh, let me encourage you in the uh, chat, you will see, let me hang up on that phone. You can see in the chat a link uh, that will get you uh, to their newsletter, a place where you can sign up for their newsletter. There's also just a box there too, where you can leave a a note or you can um, ask a question or something and all of that will get to Kika and Anunga. Thank you all so much. Bob, I'll turn it back to you. Yes, thank you. And uh, I tell you, I have watched uh, what Kika and Anunga have done these 10 years and it's just a work of God. Mm -hmm. hey, regularly as a staff that God would send laborers into this harvest field. We are an international mission field right here in Dallas. And I know Two of the people that God has sent are the, this couple and uh, their faithfulness to serve, their uh, dedication to the Lord, uh, their creativity to find new and different ways to reach people. It's just been an amazing thing to see. And uh, I'm just uh, thankful that DBA has been a part of it. Uh, Scott and uh, Tim, especially kind of leading the way in our work with uh, Kika and Nugla, but uh, we just want to say to you how much we appreciate you and the work that you're doing and what an honor it is to uh, pray for you and to support you. And, uh, and we just thank the Lord for each person and that has come to Christ by your ministry. And there are people that uh, would not be coming to our churches. You know, they are uh, uh, from different backgrounds, different religions, and they hear about Jesus and they come to believe in him. So this is, I mean, this is the book of Acts kind of stuff. It is really exciting. So let's just thank the Lord together uh, for what he has done. So let me lead us in prayer as we pray together. Father, we just feel so honored, so blessed to hear what you are doing. And we do see the power of the gospel working in our city. And Lord, we thank you that when people are coming here from different parts of the world and they've not heard the gospel that now uh, they are hearing about you. And I just praise you for uh, sending Kika and Nukla. I thank you for their faithfulness. Lord, I pray that you continue to meet the needs that they have, that you continue to provide for the work that they are doing. We pray for these nine churches that have been planted by their ministry, that you continue to bless those churches. And I uh, thank you, Lord, that this has expanded to other states. So, Lord, you do far more than we could even imagine or comprehend, and we praise you for that. Thank you for this time to meet together. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Remember, we'll meet next week, and you'll hear another local community ministry, a church uh, that is really making an impact. And uh, so I hope you'll be here same time, same place next week. Two weeks, we'll have our final executive board uh, for the year. But uh, we praise the Lord for each one of you.